mängutöö loengusaali partneriks on Digitoota agentur Optimist Digital. Good. So thank you for this uh, grandiose uh, transfer here to me. Thank you, Markus. And uh, yeah, so um, kind of I'm, I'm new here or kind of renew in Estonia. Uh, so some might know me from before, but uh, I haven't been so active in the gaming community the last time I was in Estonia and then I traveled the world. And so now I'm back. And uh, so, short description of me about myself is I'm your friendly, crazy, nomadic neighborhood professor, inventor, maker, YouTuber, and coffee lover. So, on anything, I welcome you to engage with me. Um, so, my career in a very short, linear fashion is I started out as a geek, then uh, I did a lot of Linux and IT, um, then I graduated in software engineering, in home automation, and um, did a lot of Internet of Things, but during this IoT time, there was this interest in virtual reality which came up, and so I started with 3D printing, printing my own Google Cardboards and kind of things that came off my head to enter other worlds. And so now I ended up uh, being pretty active in virtual and augmented reality and working together with Raimond to make the dream of uh, computer graphics curriculum uh, reality in the University of Tartu. Um, but uh, you probably had enough academic talk now, so maybe we should try to make the bridge back to gaming. So, and uh, yeah, so let's take gaming. Let's take a little bit talking about the future and some pop culture. What, what do we get? Have an idea? It's Ready Player One, isn't it? So, gaming, pop culture, Futurism is Ready Player One, and uh, so that did actually inspire me quite a bit. So, but let me, so I talk just about what uh, I am about, so, but not too many people here, but let's see if you at least know Ready Player One. So who has seen the Ready Player One movie here? Okay, I think that is proper, so as a gamer you should know that one. Has anybody actually done the kind of mundane thing and read the book too? Good, good, good. Did, uh, did you also read Ready Player Two up there? No, I, I actually did read Ready Player Two, and it's actually pretty important. So I, uh, I will talk about that. Uh, do you read? So do you read other kind of similar things with VR? And so there are kind of really cool books out there: Neuromancer, Demon. Really? No. Okay. Sad. Um, so, but we, we talk about Ready Player One. So do you think Ready Player One is about a dystopia or a utopia? So who thinks it's about a dystopian environment? Okay, so and who thinks it's utopia? Okay, more, yeah, yes, yes. So we are in a gaming environment. We should all think that it's more utopia than dystopia, good. Um, so for me too, for, I, also even if they are the setting, especially if you watch the movie, the movie is much more bleak than, than the book. So everybody who hasn't book, read the book, read the book gives more of this utopian idea, uh, if you read that. And um, for me, it's actually giving a really nice idea in the future because it has this learning aspect in it. So probably, if you're not a professor and read Ready Player One, you don't see that. But for me, uh, it captures this, uh, captures the attention because it was a lot about learning. And I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe there's something I can learn from. Maybe. Maybe I can shape the world in a similar way as a professor and teacher and an educator. So in, in Ready Player Two, it's actually not such a great book, but it really has a really nice chapter on this learning environment that is built in Ready Player One. So, and that kind of brought me back to this topic. So has anybody, uh, yeah, I think the movie mentions Ludus, yeah? Do you remember Ludus, the, the planet? So Ludus is the school planet in uh, in there, but Ludus is actually not that interesting because there's another educational environment mentioned in there, which is uh, Halcedonia, and uh, so the magic kingdom of Halcedonia. And so then I did some research back and kind of tried to find the right quote here for you uh, from the book, and then you might also understand why I'm so excited as a teacher. So unlike this is a quote from the Ready Player One book. Unlike their real-world counterparts, most of the oasis, wastes, the environment in Ready Player One, uh, public school teachers seem to genuinely enjoy their job. Probably because, so they did enjoy their job. So, and um, 
you know, life as a teacher can really suck. And uh, because there are so many restrictions from the system that doesn't make it so nice. And you sometimes think, isn't there technology? Isn't there kind of another way to do what I'm doing here? And I thought, yeah, maybe they have a point. Not exactly the same reasons like in Ready Player One, but uh, maybe virtual reality could open a door for doing different teaching that actually can be enjoyed by every participant, not only the students, not only the teachers, and maybe also the developers who help in them. There was another point that was very interesting. So this is when Octon and Kira retired to their home in Oregon, they created a non-profit organization called Halcedonia. And so you, from my background, you have to know I've worked a lot with uh, disadvantaged communities and tried to use making and the IoT stuff to kind of bootstrap them. Even had worked with some people who work with the one, one laptop per child. And I always thought that would be so cool to, in, to get everybody to get education, to get everybody involved. And so this nonprofit idea is, I think, very important. You see also down here, the Holiday Learning Foundation also provided impoverished, uh, impoverished children around the globe with free Oasis hardware and internet access. Yeah, so hardware and internet, this is kind of, when we want to get people on board in virtual reality, that's usually what we are struggling with because that's expensive. So if we could provide that, we could probably achieve something. So, and again, I'm, I'm quite a gamer myself. I'm, not, I'm just playing puzzle games and adventure games. So I'm not kind of good in, in first person shooter stuff, but I've always liked to play games. And I think gamers have been so important for the progress of what happened in computer science. So I think this idea of envisioning new environments and showing the status quo is something that can drive innovation. And I think we should more actively start driving innovation because we have. So GPUs uh, is more out of our uh, need of getting high fidelity gaming and high fidelity simulation, but it actually has totally revolutionized the deep learning stuff and cloud computing um, because without the GPUs, it wouldn't have been possible. We also kind of dug our own or shoot ourselves in the own foot because we enabled a lot of crypto stuff and now we can't buy our graphics card anymore. But okay, still, we gamers have actually created new financial systems and they might enable us to do something in the future. And I, I would even go so far and say that social networks comes also out of the gaming realm because we have played uh, massive uh, multiplayer online games before there were social networks. They were kind of pretty simple, but this was one of the first social experiences you could have in the net. And um, I learned a lot from Twitch, actually, for my online teaching. Without uh, Twitch, I think I would have never known how to teach during the pandemic. And of course, virtual reality is something that has been driven extremely by the gaming community and has been by research and military before, but I think the current iteration is actually uh, driven by the gaming community and the new headsets come from it. So, we enabled this. And then there was another game changer lately. It was this kind of weird pandemic we had, and um, so uh, I learned a lot about, yeah, working online and, uh, yeah, Zoom, Skype and all this stuff, which I used before actually pretty happily. I learned it to hate it, but some people love it. So, what about you? So, do you love Zoom? Who loves Zoom? Who hates Zoom? <laughs> okay, it's about 50-50, good. I kinda, it's, for me, I could basically say yes to both of these. So, but I think I more hate it than I love it. And um, because I tried out working in VR. Has anybody tried during the pandemic to work in VR? Use any of these kind of uh, VR chat, big screen, Mozilla hub, or engage? Anybody of you tried to do some work in VR? This was, so I did. It was awesome. And this is when I really started hating uh, all of this. I said, oh, hey, I can actually work with people, with avatars sitting in the same room, and we could actually replicate some of the social interactions we had before. So just like in Ready Player One. Yeah, so that's. So why don't we do that? So um, the, you're the first guys I'm pitching this to in Estonia. So um, I want to build a foundation that does something to education, that revolutionizes education. And I need the Estonian mindset for it. I need people who are open to technology, uh, a little bit entrepreneurial, and want to try something new, and want to pour something in there. So um, 
But I think I need to take these points I highlighted out there. So I think we should enable with VR um, to reinvent education in a way that it's engaging for all players in there, for the learners, for the teachers, for the developers who enabled it. So the designers, the developers as a, as a, a group now which actually create content uh, for it. And also kind of each role should respect the other. Yeah, so I, I want to be respected as a teacher sometimes. But also when I develop something, I think that if, even important, also all the students need to be respected and treated as grown-ups uh, in this world. So then we need a, we need a framework. Yeah? We need to have something that allows us to easily create new content. And uh, we need to be able to manage to use free software because if this should be non-profit, I think Unity might cause some problems. I had a lot of license problems with Unity before, sued my university. Uh, and um, so there's some stories around that that are not so happy. And uh, I've traveled the world, so I would think VR and education in VR could open this intercultural, uh, intercultural and international aspect of it and kind of cover the whole world. And uh, the bonus might actually be, if we build something like that, that the next pandemic will be not as bad as this one. So, why am I actually here? Yeah, so I, I, I need your help. And um, I need ideas. I need more students to come to the university, take our great classes, and then end up helping us creating VR content. Um, I need funding. So if you are in that realm, uh, to because it's kind of a tricky funding thing, because uh, if it's a non-profit, then yeah, you have to bind some interesting mechanisms to it. So if you're kind of a lawyer, if you're kind of in this area and think about how funding there works, give me please input. Um, experience, you have more experience in Estonia, you know how culture develops quicker in a small country, so that could be replicated and maybe uh, taken outside. And um, yeah, and generally, when it is very nice to try out things in Estonia because of this openness, so maybe we can use that as a sample to and then uh, project on a bigger uh, space. So if you want to contact me, um, so either if you think that was completely bullshit what I did here and you have some great ideas why that is bullshit, please uh, let me know. But of course, if you're also excited like me, then please contact me too. Um, so you can talk to me either via chat, via email, or in one of the VR solutions I had before, but as I'm now living in Estonia, please feel out to reach out to me and just have a real in-person coffee to discuss technology and geek out together. So that is also nice. I'm usually on the weekends in Tallinn, and uh, during the week I'm usually in uh, Tartu, so both uh, places are uh, possible to meet up in person. If not, uh, reach out to my website, yulnolo.net, or uh, I made an email for just this event here, so moo at mail.yulnolo.net. If you want to have it automatically categorized in this topic, feel free to reach out. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for letting this pitch to you. And I hope I will talk at one point to each of you again, and we will take it a step further together.